Hello and welcome to the Miscast table. My name is Mons and with me tonight I have Jonas. Yes, and uh, we are about to do battle in the old world. Yes, we are. We are playing Flank Attack, 2000 points of Warhammer the Old World. Yeah. And I'm bringing my Empire. And I'm bringing the Noble Bretonians, the Ghostly Boys. Yeah, so we'll see how this, this plays out. I have, or Empire in general, have quite a bit of shooting. And Bretonia kind of survives on their high armor saves, high movement. So we'll see if they can, can get into base contact before they're, they're shot to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you have a bunch of really hard hitting stuff as well. I yeah. think that you are playing a very mobile empire list. Yeah, I like mobility and also like shooting. So yeah. <laughs> this is, this is the dream. Yeah. This is and the dream. we've been discussing like it should be possible to make a really strong empire list. Yeah. We haven't just nailed everything out yet but today might be the day yeah we'll see if i, if I can do it here today uh, and jonas what do you call a six plus save a t-shirt you call it a t-shirt save <laughs> which brings us to our sponsor which is into the am uh, and they have currently a t-shirt save going on you could say if you use our code miscast 10 at checkout you get 10 percent off at everything we also have a link in the description which brings you automatically to the site with our code embedded and we call it the t-shirt save, but they have a lot more things than just yeah. t-shirts. Uh, this one I'm sporting today is from Into the AM. And if you're looking to upgrading your wardrobe while at the same time supporting us, uh, look into what Into the AM have. They have really great stuff uh, and you get uh, 10% off. So yeah. it's a good time. But with that, should we look at the Empire Army list? Let's do. All right, 2000 points of Empire. And if we start with the Lords and Heroes, I have, this is the model for Balthasar Gelt, but he is a Wizard Lord today with the lore of Battle Magic, a level four wizard. And he also has the Armor of Tarnas, I think it's called. It's a six plus light armor, six plus armor save, but you also get a five plus ward. So since he's on a Pegasus, he's a skirmisher, he can cast spells in any direction. And, and be quite quite the menace. Uh, I also have a warrior priest mounted on a uh, uh, barded uh, horse. So he's gonna be riding with one unit of my knights that I'm gonna come into here very soon. Maybe give them some uh, multiple wounds, maybe give them some extra short range. It is the priest of, of Ulrich of course. And here's one of those things I'm not sure if I've cheated when I've done my list building because he has something called the I think it's called the Silver Horn. Yeah, the Silver Horn. And that makes it so that you can re-roll the extra d6 you roll on a Swift Stride. But you can only give it to a character that has to rule Swift Stride. And he doesn't have it in base, but he gets it with his mount. So it's like, I'm not sure if that's allowed or not. You, I guess we can yeah. figure it out in the comments, comments below. Uh, as my general, I have a Grandmaster uh, on a barded horse with full plate. And he also has Roomfang, the 100 point weapon that uh, uh, wounds on a 2 plus. I believe it is. Yeah, yeah against any target. Yeah, so it's, it's quite strong. Also, have an engineer with the Hawkland rifle, gonna be riding with my war machines. And if we go into the units after that, I have, of course, the steam tank, really good and has a lower chance of, of misfiring in the, in the old world than in the, the other editions. Uh, I have six regular knights uh, with uh, lances and I have six regular knights with great weapons. The difference is that uh, lances you get the first turn when you go in you get an extra extra plus two strength and, and some armor piercing but you lose it the turn after that. With great weapons you hit last which is downside but you can hit very hard every turn so they fill, fill different roles. I also have two shooting units, one unit of uh, 12 crossbowmen and one unit of uh, 12, uh, I think they were called hand gunners. And both of these units have uh, captains, uh, or captains, what are they called, like champions in their units. And the champions have Hawkland rifles. And Hawkland rifles, you can uh, sniper a character. You can pick up any model, even a model in a unit, and shoot at it from 13th range, strength 4. Uh, so I can use that to snipe my characters, magicians, or, or whatever I want to at quite a long range. I also have a war machine. I only could fit one in this list, and it's the Hellfire Volligan, which I think is the best war machine, uh, since the cannons only do D3 wounds now instead of, of D6. Uh, 
uh, and they hit that strength, strength 5 with high armor piercing. Uh, last but definitely not least, I have two small units, three man units of Demogriff Knights. And these are quite expensive, they cost like 200 points plus each. But they hit really hard. They have uh, lances, the knights on top. And I'm not, you could give them halberds, but I'm not that worried about how hard I'm gonna hit in the second turn of combat. Because the thing that does the most wounds is the Demogriffs themselves. So I didn't feel the need to, to upgrade the, the Demogriff Knights even more. Um, and that is my list in its entirety. Uh, and I think I have a pretty decent chance at shooting some, some Bretonias this, this game. But uh, without further ado, let's take a look at Bretonia. So, this is my 1999 points of Bretonia. Uh, I am bringing a 3 land setup where I have one unit of uh, Knights Errant, one unit of Knights of the Realm, and one gallant unit of Grail Knights, and they are really hard hitting. So ideally, they are going to be the ones dealing damage, and the other ones are going to be a threat, because with Lances and the Bretonian cavalry unit is a lethal threat. Uh, joining them, I have two units of Pegasus Knights, uh, three each, and they are very mobile. Uh, with the Skirmisher rule, they can set up charges in very unfortunate uh, positions for the opponent. So I'm probably going to try to bring them up on the flank, see if I can do some damage with them. Uh, and any Bretonian army isn't complete with any of the peasant units, so I have one unit of archers with skirmisher rule. And they have kind of good like weapons, but they seldom deal that much damage. They are mostly there to like pot shot at uh, lone characters and potentially get some few ships of damage in over the course of the game. I have one uh, big unit of men at arms. Uh, they have the uh, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's called the Holy Triptarch and a Grail Monk. No, it's, it's like a monk of some sort. And a champion. And the rules for these guys is that they need to either choose to fight with their two-handed halberd, uh, which grants them uh, additional armor penetration and strength, or they can fight one-handed and shield, uh, with allowing them to use a rule called the Shield Wall. So ideally, uh, you want to use the Grail Tripyark, which uh, grants them Stubborn, to ensure that they only fall back in good order if they would fail the first combat. And then you can use the Shield Wall in the follow-up turn to make them only uh, give ground, uh, so make sure that they are a kind of annoying block of uh, units to deal with for the opponent. They can really halt and advance as long as they survive. Uh, and being peasants, they are not perhaps the best at doing exactly that, but uh, hopefully they can make do as long as needed so that the real heroes of the Bretonian forces can sweep in and save the day. Uh, I have also an interesting peasant unit called the Grail Relic Uh The unit is basically a uh, bunch of battle pilgrims, and then there is a center relic which grants the whole unit unbreakable, and it is also allowed a lady save as long as there is a character within I think it's 12 inches um, that has the rule the Grail Wow and both the uh, Grail Knights the uh, Lord and his uh, Paladin has this vow in my army uh, making it so that this unit can be really durable and in a similar manner to the Men at Arms act as a uh, stopping block for the opponent. Uh, for my characters I have a lord on a royal pegasus with the virtue of heroism, granting him the killing blow and monster slaying special rules. Uh, very strong rules for, for certain in, the, in this uh, old world game. Uh, it's not going to work against the steam tank unfortunately, because it's a chariot, but against almost anything else I think Moses is going to be hesitant to, to run straight into it. He also comes equipped with the... Uh, Gromril Helmet, uh, which makes it so that he has a 2 plus armor save, uh, allowing him rerolls on the results of 1s. So against any non-armor uh, piercing target or attack, he is very durable. Uh, he has also been joined by his trusty battle standard bearer, the Paladin. Um, I haven't given him a name yet, but he has a 
virtue of the ideal, making it so that he cannot join any unit, but instead he gets one additional attack, one additional weapon skill, one additional leadership, and it might also increase his initiative. I need to check that one up. And lastly, I have the Lady Elise Duchart. She is uh, one of the characters from the Arcane Journal. Uh, I think she is the absolute best dispeller in the game. She has a rule which makes it so that if you make any double ones or double results on the dice roll when attempting to dispel, she automatically dispels the spell and causes one wound against the casting wizard. Uh, she is only a level 3 uh, normally, but due to that special rule, she is very good at uh, thwarting enemy spellcasters. And I don't know exactly what Mons has brought, but I know that he likes, he, he mentioned that he likes his uh, uh, mobile units, his uh, war machines, but I kind of think that he also likes his spellcasters, so I'm gonna try to negate that one. But uh, let's head into deployment and see what happens on the battlefield. Yeah. Shall we roll off to see who deploys first? Let's make a roll off. Uh, I roll a six. Ooh, you six. roll a six. <laughs> Four. Five. Five. Okay. Uh, so I'm probably gonna start deploying. All right, see you after deployment. The Battle of Pine Crags, also known as Flank Attack. Once the battlefield has been set up, the winner of a roll-off chooses which player will deploy the first unit. The winner of the roll-off must also choose their deployment zone. Prior to deployment, both players secretly divide their armies into two forces, the main force and the flanking force. The flanking force must contain at least one non-character unit and can be worth up to 33% of the total points value of the army. For example, in a 2000 point army, your flanking force may be worth up to 666 points. The flanking force may include characters, but cannot include the general. Once the flanking forces have been selected, each player secretly makes note of which flank, left or right, theirs will be deployed upon. Then starting with the player that won the roll-off, the players deploy their main forces within their central deployment zones, using the alternating units method. Finally, after both players have finished deploying their main forces, the players reveal where their flanking forces are to be deployed, starting with the player that won the roll-off. The players deploy their flanking forces within the chosen 18-inch flanking zone using the alternating units method. Once deployment is complete, the winner of a roll-off takes first turn. The battle will last for 6 rounds or until one player concedes. Other than the deployment special rules already given, this scenario has no other special rules. And once the battle has been ended, you use victory points to determine the winner. And with that, let's get into the game. Alright, so deployment is complete. And are you we happy with how your units are positioned, Mons? Pretty much. We can start with my army here. Since it is flank attack, it's pretty tight here in the middle. So I didn't get the good way to put my shooting units. These have full line of sight, these are very much in cover. Um, but I have my knights here on the side, my wizard, steam tank. And then we chose the same flank and I placed my Hellfire Wolligan, my Engineer and my Demigriff Knights. One unit of Demigriff Knights here. Yeah. I, I thought it would be clever. I thought that you were not going to pick that side because it had so much uh, stuff on it. Yeah, <laughs> stuff on it. So I thought, I'm going to be here, I'm going to move up with my Pegasus over here. Yeah. But now you have your imposing... Uh, Demigriff Knights. I don't want to be charged by them. Yeah. So we have Knights Errant, right? Yeah. Pegasus Knights. Pegasus, Pegasus. one. Pegasus. Uh, Men at Arms. Knights Errant. Uh, Lady Elise Duchart, the Paladin with Battle Standard. Grey Knights in the midst. Uh, Grail Relic Q, uh, Peasant Archers. And then we have my Lord on a Royal Pegasus. He worries me a little bit because yeah. he has quite a good line into the the flank here, uh, which is a bit bothersome because I have my archers and stuff here uh, and the knights as well. So we'll see what happens, but should we make a roll off and see who gets yes. first turn Let's make... using my Tomb King's dice? And oh. a roll of five. And I'm gonna do the Bretonian thing, I'm gonna yeah. pray. <laughs> That's so right, I always forget turn. that. <laughs> You're gonna pray, I get first turn. Yeah, but it's nice yeah. to make you a roll. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but I had a good roll. You had a good roll. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we'll see I'm gonna you. Pray. See you after movement of the Empire. Yeah. 
All right, so movement first turn. Uh, I'm moving up my knights, knights here. Moved up my uh, wizard. wizard a little bit. Demogriff knights are hiding behind the hill here. So they can't be seen by the grail knights. Uh, I move up my great weapon knights over here. This is a possible charge, but it's quite far. It's, uh, yeah, it's 18, it's not that far, but uh, I'm not sure if Jonas is willing to, to make that. I lined up my steam tank over here towards the battle standard. Battle standard yeah. uh, I moved up my demogriff knights and readdressed the ranks. Before they were two wide, now they're three wide, so they're one full rank. Uh, I didn't get anything interesting off in the strategy phase. Uh, I had nothing that I could really cost. I have Curse of Cowboy Flight, which is a hex spell that I didn't have range. Oaken Shield to give myself a a ward save, I cast that, but Jonas managed to dispel it. Uh, Arcane Ur Urgency to give one of my units an extra move, but I didn't feel like I needed it this turn, so I didn't use it. Uh, and also Curse of Arrow Attraction, and that I also don't have range for. It's range 21, and I was not within, within range 21. Uh, but I will be. Uh, will be soon. Uh, so with that, I think we go into my shooting phase, because we are no close combat this turn. So shooting. So in my shooting phase, a lot of things weren't in range. Uh, my handguns here weren't in range. My Hellfire Volleygun is not in range. I did shoot with my crossbowmen, but they are in hard cover because of my own units onto the peasant bowmen. And I killed one peasant bowman, which is not yeah. amazing. <laughs> uh, then I shot my Hawkland rifles from here into the Pegasus Knights. And one of them took one wound. Um, so not a super strong first turn I would say, uh, but it's hard to do that with a shooting army as well, you need to close some distance. Um, so with that we go over to Bretonnia and see what Jonas can do in his turn one. Sure. So movement for the Bretonnia, what have you come up with? Uh, I'm gonna try to utilize my turns in a more, bit more wise manner, so I moved up the Knights of the Realm slightly, making it so that Mons is not gonna have a su supreme charge against me. Uh, my Demogriff, my Pegasus Knights took cover behind the forest. My Men at Arms, uh, now blessed with the Earthen Ramparts, have moved up, making it so that they get a really good save if they take a charge. The Knights Errant move up ever so slightly, as did the Grail Knights. The Pegasus Knights that were over here made a redirecting movement over here, as did the Paladin. The uh, Grail Relic moved up, and the Lord moved into cover behind the forest. He's gonna try to set up for a good next turn. Good charge. You are um, a bit afraid of my Hellfire Volleygun. I, I can not, I'm it. really not liking Hellfire Volleygun when it comes to the Bretonian armor saves because it reduces all of their armor to almost nothing and it can absolutely devastate the unit. Yeah, but we might have some charges next turn. We might have. I'm just gonna shoot with my archers and then we'll see what happens. Yeah. You can roll them, you only have one shooting, so... One shooting, so I have... I'm gonna shoot into everything the night. into the knights. I'm gonna hit that sixes. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see. And you have... how many are they? Uh, since you killed one, they are only nine. So we are looking for six. Are they a volley fire or...? Uh, they are skirmishers, so they, f they fire like in the midst yeah. between. So, but they give cover to each other. Uh, then I need to roll them separately. Two hits. Two hits. Nice. And then these are sixes with the uh, reroll. Six plus four. That is also. So three okay. hits. So strength three, toughness three. Yes. I presume. So four plus two wound. I think. No One, wounds. two, three. And, and then. Then we head into turn two. Empire. Empire. Alright, so in my movement phase, so first in my strategy phase, I managed to get off two spells. I got off uh, Oaken Shield on my Magician, so he has a 5 plus ward save. And I got the Curse of Air of Attraction onto the Grail Pilgrim. Yeah, this unit here. Uh, there was nothing else in the, in the strategy phase. Uh, in the movement phase, I actually moved my stuff back a little bit over here. Uh, to make sure that Jonas can't charge me with his grain lights and stuff. I just moved this unit out of the forest, which means that this unit does not have line of sight to this unit now. Um, other than that, I just moved my wizard a little bit 
and I moved up my Demogriff Knight. So this is now a 15 inch range and this is the Impetuous Knights. No, uh, not the they are knights. the Knights of the Realm. Knights of the Realm, normal Knights. But he can try to make a charge here. He could potentially make a charge with his, uh, with his Knights, Pegasus Knights over here. But we will see what happens. Uh, and with that we go into a shooting phase. Yes. So we are having quick turns. Yeah, quick turns here. Um, I had some shooting, but it didn't go really well at all. I think I killed one here. Two? No, two here. Uh, and other than that, yeah, I killed one of the, um, what are they called? The militia men. No, uh, they were 24 to begin with. Oh, 24 to begin so I didn't kill anyone. Oh. So I killed <laughs> two, two of the relic bearers. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I had an abysmal shooting phase. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't hit anything with my cannon yet. Yeah, a really hope. unlucky cannon. Misfired I hope, um, this turn and, and just into the ground. Uh, yeah, you can say that he misfired and took one wound. Yeah. That, that's something that happened as well. But uh, with that, we go into Britannia turn two. Yeah, let's see what happens. Yeah. All right, my friend. Are you happy with your movement? Uh, I'm kind of like thwarted by your defensive positionings. Uh, it's a bit of cat and mouse game here. Yeah, cat and mouse uh, like each party is awaiting the op right opportune moment to strike. And I think my lords and characters are lining up. In the back lines. In the back lines. You're not afraid of steam tanks and stuff. You're unafraid. Not <laughs> really. Uh, like the cannonball is annoying for sure, but it's not the end of the world since they only deal D3 damage. And you can take like... Not take, but you can take one hit. All right, let's see if we can. Let's see if we can. <laughs> so I'm gonna have the Lord the... up here. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I did forget to move one thing, so I'm just gonna move them right now. I'm gonna yeah. move my archers up. And these moved up behind the hill. We have the Grain Knights up here. Yeah. These also moved up, the Impetuous Knights, right? Impetuous Knights, they might need to test if they are Impetuous next, next turn. turn. Yeah, and you move these Knights of the Realm back a little bit, yeah. so, so I now need an 8 on Mexican the Mexican stand-up over here as yeah. well. How much points are your unit? Uh, I think this unit is 200 something, 230. And yeah. I so it's about the same points. The same, yeah. so it's, that's keeping like, each other in check. Yeah, yeah. keeping each other in check. Uh, should you do your small round of shooting? I can do my small round of shooting. So these are... Majority is not within cover. Yeah. But for these, they are. So I have six shots where the unit has moved. So they are going to hit you have short on... range. There was less than 15 here, I believe. Less, less than 15. Uh, on the unit, uh, the ones closest. They should be in. Yeah. These two might be. But this, I think that these uh, are long range. Yeah, so let's do your uh, shots. Long range, moved, hitting on sixes. Yep. One, one six. And then we have three... That are hitting on sixes with reroll. Yep. Nothing. Nothing. So one. one. Can you wound? One you wound. can. Can I save? Two plus armor. I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. That serves. Uh, one noble knight is dead. <laughs> the lowly peasant arrow. Yeah. And with that we go into empire. Yeah. That's my first uh, damage. First actually. damage. Yeah. I, I am going to try to cast the yeah, ladies, uh, Wings Gaze of Wrath, I think it's called. Yeah, five. Uh, uh, two dice, five D6 range. I'm going to target the Demogriff Knights. Yep. Uh, that's a 13. Can you see if I'm within range 24 here? I shouldn't be, but maybe if I'm lucky. Uh, range 24 here. So I'm just outside, right? Yeah. So I'm going to try my army wide. Okay. No. No. 5d6, it might be that it just whiffs. Yeah, the average here is 15, so... Yeah. Uh, That's pretty good. 20, that might actually be enough. Yeah, yeah. one Demogriff Knight is hit. hit. Uh, wounding on 4+. plus. All right. Yes. One wound. No armor saves allowed. No armor saves allowed. No, one of my Demogriff <laughs> Knights yeah. takes a single check so, that's a, so, so you're not lying. Yeah. Uh, burning Gaze, draw a strength line, 5d6, uh, suffers a strength, strength 4 hit with no armor save. Yeah, so he's down to 2 wounds remaining. And then we head into Empire, turn 3. Yeah. So Mons, lots of stuff happened in the Empire phase. Yeah, I think, I think it did. We start with the spells, I cast the Curse of Arrow Attraction on this unit here. 
Um, so I can reroll once to hit. Uh, and I cast Oaken Shield on my wizard. Yeah. After that I did some movement and I made a double charge here. But I rolled really low on the Demogriff Knight. So they didn't get into this unit. So it's only this unit here. Um, that can uh, can fight. Uh, and I tried, did try to use my priest, priest to give them multiple wounds. But I failed the leadership test. Uh, and I reformed so I can shoot on the general here as much as, as possible. Yeah. After that, I tried to make what I thought was a really smart move. It probably was the right move to move up the knights over here. So they're out of the charge out of this unit, but not outside of these two units and this unit here. Yeah. And I tried to cast a spell so I can move them again. And I needed a six to cast it, and I rolled a five. Um, so that's why they're stuck where they are. Yeah. Uh, in a, in a oh. perfect world, they would have <laughs> kept on moving a little bit, but I rolled quite low, so. It is what it is, uh, but that is all my movement and we have the first close combat coming up here later. So let's go into shooting and close combat. Yes. So uh, first we have the shooting phase and my cannon missed, or my, what is it called? <laughs> what is this model called? What steam is it tank. called? It's a steam tank. <laughs> uh, my, my steam tank misfired yeah. and I lost one wound again. Uh, I shot here with my archers. I managed to make uh, one wound, uh, which was saved. Uh, after that, I shot with my, uh, both my uh, Hellblaster and my Hangunners. And I actually managed to kill four knights here. So there are yeah. only two, two remaining now. Um, in close combat, I managed to kill four of the relic bearers. But they did kill one in return. Yeah, he managed to kill my champion. <laughs> Rolled really good. Uh, so it's looking kind of bleak for, for that unit with my general and my battle priest uh, because they're going to get multi charge now next turn. Um, but that is the end of Empire turn 3, so we go into Britannia turn yeah. 3. Now we're deep into the action here, I must yeah. say. No more reservations or no more cat and mouse games. Yeah. We are in the thick of it. Yeah. This multi charge was kind of expected. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. So we're gonna see how it how it goes here. You have your general with the rune find, so yeah, that's gonna be boss man. A boss man. Over here we have my lord uh, flank charging the demigriff knights. Yeah. The grey knights moved up. The knight uh, errants uh, reformed and are looking to make a quick getaway since they got decimated. Over here the men arms are moving up. The pegasus knights are moving up. The Knight of the Realm charged the uh, uh, Empire Knights, what yeah, are the called? Knights. And uh, we are really looking to win this combat and then make a reform. No, you're looking to, to stand and then <laughs> eat one here. Mm. Yeah, then, then it's going to be a bad day. <laughs> and uh, we do only now have I'm one... 24 as well. Yeah, you're within 24. So we might get to see some dispels coming up, but we are going to make the uh, gaze of the lady. Yeah, it is try a good to... line here. <laughs> <laughs> try to get it off. Uh, that's a 12. That's I'm going to try to dispel that with my level 4. Uh, a 12. Well, 12, but that is not enough. Okay. So you're off with a line okay. shot. This could be line really shot. bad. <laughs> this could be really bad. 5d6 <laughs> in length. Oh, oh, that's I think not they, I so think far. 13, that's not, they might not. Oh, yeah, like you hit one. one. Oh. Yeah, one. Strength four, wounding on three plus. Yeah. Cocked. Cocked. Uh, one one uh, dead. archer is dead. Could have been much worse. <laughs> yeah, that could have been much worse. <laughs> but let's go into the rest of the shooting yeah. and close combat. Let's do. Very eventful turn three for the Bretonians. Yeah. We broke through over here on the flank. Um, we won combat. But the ones that did the killing was the Pegasus Knights as they ran through and they failed all of their uh, fleeing through uh, yeah. enemy I rolled unit. only once, once and twos, yeah. <laughs> so they all died. Horrible. <laughs> but we have a pretty good charge here from next uh, time. That's going to be bothersome for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, over here the Lord won over the champion of the Demogriff Knights whom uh, broke combat and then they fled through the unit and they took one additional wound. Yeah. Over here the... Paladin was super lucky against the Lord. Yeah, the Grandmaster the with Grandmaster, the Runefang. Yeah. Runefang, yeah. So really expensive kill there. And the um, Circle Knights have stubborn, so they stood. They f fell back in good order and are now lining up for their turn four. Yeah. 
So we'll see see what happens here. You only got in with the follow up move yeah. with this unit. Uh, he rolled two the BSP, so yeah. he's he's not in. So we'll see if I can can win this combat here uh, with some luck. Yeah, but you have some uh, heavy rounds of shooting incoming. You have this uh, war machines. You have the archers. You have the hellfire wall gun. I think this turn is gonna hurt. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Let's go into Empire turn four. So my movement phase was a bit eventful, I would say. I tried to make a charge over here with the Demogriff Knights. Uh, and Jonas chose to flee with his... Um, Knights Knight of the Realm. Knights of the Realm. And they fled really far, like 12. Yeah. And they fled through my units and one of them died because of it. Um, in my... I didn't have any other charges. I just pivoted up the steam tank and the archers a little bit. These are already in combat. I did manage to get off the multiple wounds rule from the... Winter uh, Shell. From, yeah, from Priest the, of Ulrich. From the Priest of Ulrich. And I got Arrow of Attract, Curse of Arrow of Attract on this unit. So I get to reroll uh, natural hits of one when, when shooting at the target. Oh. Uh, and I also got off the uh, movement spell, the conveyance spell, uh, it's called Arcane Urgency on this unit, so I managed to move them up a little bit towards here uh, to make a nice charge next turn. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see, especially this combat here, I hope I can win this uh, quite, quite nicely. Um, they are unbreakable as long as one model is down, but now you only need to deal three wounds since you have the multiple wounds rule. Yeah, but I can't overrun or anything since... Uh, it was you who moved into me. So I'm gonna have to eat a charge anyway, I think. Uh, but we'll see. I think the shooting here is gonna be really interesting. Yeah. So let's start with that. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do that. Yeah. So uh, the shooting phase was all right, I think. Yeah. Uh, you got some points. Yeah, I managed to kill two Grail Knights with the cannon. Yeah. It hit for the first time. Um, and I also managed to kill two. Yes. Of these uh, Pegasus Knights. Yes, yes. And I did one wound on the Duke with the Breath Weapon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I also won combat here and killed the yeah. Grail Relic Q. So I'm going to eat some charges very soon, probably. Uh, but you have multiple wounds. That's, that's a good rule until yeah. next turn. So um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. It's going to be really interesting to see. Yeah. Um, but let's move into Bretonnia turn. Four. Four. Yeah, let's do. The Bretonians are pushing their attack over here. We uh, attacked once more into the Empire Knights. Over here, we attacked into the crossbowmen or the what are they called? Like yeah. ranged uh, free. And they're called state troops or something. Yeah, something ranged, ranged state, state troops. troops. Uh, the men at arms, having done nothing this game, is uh, almost across half the playing <laughs> field. And the Pegasus Knight charged the Hellfire Wall again. The Grey Knights uh, reformed so that if the uh, uh, what are called Demogriff Knights are coming, they get to make a counter charge. Yeah. Over here, the Knights Errant tried to uh, attack the other Demogriff Knights, which uh, rolled really high. Unfortunately, yeah, eleven on yeah. two dice. <laughs> <laughs> Something needs to be said about your dice rolls. Uh, yeah, I guess so. But, uh... Yeah. Uh, Knights of the Realm reformed uh, after uh, passing their leadership test. Yeah. Uh, so we head into uh, combat because we have no shooting. No shooting? Yeah. But we have one spell. One spell. Yeah, we, can, yeah. we can try the burning gaze. Yeah. Let's do it from the lady. Uh, does that not go off. not off. Uh, so now, close, close combat. combat. Fight. Really eventful turn. Uh, we won some combats. We killed the war machine. Yeah. We killed the crossbow. But over here, the priest of Ulrich's prayers came through. And they annihilated the Pegasus Knights. They yeah, one by four. Yeah. One by four, killed two Pegasus Knights. Uh, multiple wounds too, turns out is really good against the Pegasus Knights. Yeah. Uh, the only one standing over here fleeing needs to try to rally him. And the Paladin is looking kind of alone out there. Yeah, he's used his stubborn role now. So. Yeah. so we head into Empire, turn five. Yeah. All right, movement. I made a charge against the BSB here. See if I can make something happen. Uh, I also made a charge into the side here with my Demogriff Knights. Yeah. And the maybe most unexpected charge is to charge <laughs> my wizard into the... Lone uh, Pegasus Knights. The Pegasus Real. Knights. See yeah. if I can uh, take him out. <laughs> with, with some luck I can. Um, I also got off Curse of Arrow Attracts on this unit. This was the only unit I could target. So if I fail the charge, I can shoot at them. But now they're in combat, so it's not gonna, gonna matter much. 
Uh, and I have a really nice cannon shot lined up yeah. here, so hopefully yeah. I can make something happen. I really hope that you don't kill them. Yeah. But uh, let's go into shooting. Yeah, let's do. So it was a decent, not a great shooting phase for me, really. But I had a pretty decent fight phase. I managed to kill uh, the last Pegasus Knight with my um, <laughs> wizard. wizard, and I overrun and caught him. Um, I also managed to win combat here against the BSB, but he's still alive. He fell back in, what is it, he gave ground, gave ground. and I followed up on him. So, um, yeah, it was a decent uh, decent phase. Yeah. You also had Stubborn on this unit, so it just backed yeah. away a little I, bit. I kind of, like, took a chance. I yeah. didn't reform them, I just wanted to make it so that if they didn't follow up, I would get the charge against the, the UC... Uh, state troopers. Yeah. So we'll see what happens in uh, Bretonia, turn 5. Yeah, let's do. Alright, movement for yes. Bretonia. Very quick turn 5 movement. Uh, the green lights charge the flank of the Demogriff knights. Over here, the uh, paladin, the, the lord actually, sorry, uh, made, the duke made a rear charge on the uh, remaining knights. And the uh, peasants. Made a valiant mm -hmm. effort to support their lords. Yeah. Uh, and the lady moved up. She's gonna try to make the burning gaze against uh, the... Uh, uh, what's it called? The engineer. All right. It's the only shooting attack. Eleven. Eleven. Uh, let's see if I can dispel that with my level four. I can. You can. Yeah, it's gone. No more shooting. We head into combat. Yeah. Let's fight good luck out. to you. <laughs> Thank you, the same. How did you feel about that, Jonas? What is a good, a good um, turn? Good turn. Finally got those uh, knights off the table. Yeah. And uh, the lord actually was needed. And uh, yeah. yeah. I was lucky that he got in, I think. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I was. You might have done. <laughs> that, that multiple wound roll is really like, annoying to deal yeah, with. Yeah, really good. Uh, yeah. Over here, you, however, kill all of the men at arms. Yeah. Uh, they are peasants. I can't. Uh, Fault them for dying, that is their purpose. <laughs> yeah. And you... Uh... I, I actually uh, failed that combat due to the... Uh... Oh, he here it should have been another result. Uh, I actually messed up. These units should be at the front because uh, I made a fallback in good order. But since they have the Grail Vow, they are stubborn. They're stubborn, all right. So no, but this... stubborn, they still make the fallback in good order. Yes, yeah, so just... then, then I didn't make a mistake. Uh, so they, they should be like that. They ran through my own unit and then they uh, reformed. Yeah. It's gonna be an interesting turn six for the Empire. Maybe yeah, I yeah. can snipe a BSB over here or. Yeah, possibly. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's head into Empire. End of the game. Yeah. Alright, so movement. Not a whole lot to say actually. I pivoted up my steam tank so I can shoot at his BSB and I made a charge over here with my Demogriff Knights. Other than that, it's uh, yeah, it's just some shooting and close combat, and uh, we see what can be done. Yeah, let's head into exactly that. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a decent turn for me. I almost killed the BSB. I almost. hit him with the cannon. You failed your armor save, but you made the lady yeah, save. Yeah, the lady was there to yeah, protect. Yeah, the lady protected you. Uh, I won the combat with the Demogriff Knights here. Uh, I didn't do any other wounds with shooting. It was kind of lackluster. And the um, uh, Knights of the Realm. Yeah, Knights of the Realm fell back uh, and I pursued into the Grey Knights. Grail Knights. Yeah. So um, I think it's going to be a pretty short turn six for Jonas. Yeah, um, I don't really have much to do, but yeah. let's make it happen. See what, what happens, yeah. All right, final turn. Uh, really not much to say about the turn. We did a combat over here. The Demogriff Knights... Uh, you charged in with your... Yeah, I charged in there. I kind of hoped that the, the Grey Knights would, would stand, but the Demogriff Knights have so much armor penetration from their natural the beaks and claws on, yeah. on the side. wasn't sure how I would evaluate them. Uh, I probably got myself into a mess here and lost some points uh, because of that. And I wanted her to come in from the flank so that I could get some... Uh, some uh, combat resolution and I kind of wanted Mons to fall into the trap of allocating attacks against her because she has that beguiling aura which makes it so that it's really hard to hit her. Yeah. Uh, but as it would happen he killed the Grey Knights and then she ran off in fear for her life. Yeah. So let's count some points yeah. and see, let's how, this see how it turns out. Yeah. Alright, thank you for a good thank game. You for a good game <laughs>
Yeah, it, uh, it was an exciting game actually. Uh, a bit of uh, luck on the dice rolls on my part, and some interesting uh, units coming into play over the course of the game. Yeah, I think it was a really good game. I lost a little bit because my shooting was bad, like the two first yeah. turns, and that made it a bit rough when you when you closed in there. Yeah. But, but it was still pretty close in the end, like a difference of four hundred ninety eight victory points. It's, yeah, you really yeah. started collecting home those points at the end. I kind of liked the, the like dynamics of the game, where we both had like this cautionary approach, yeah. really wanting to set up. And then I think you took the initiative by making that like movement with the Empire Knights, the yeah, Inner Circle Knights, yeah. really pushing them over the field. Mm -hmm. And then everything just started like, coming, <laughs> clashing together and yeah. uh, stuff started dying. Yeah, but your lords are super annoying. Like the 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 ability to re-roll an armor save is so good when you have a two plus armor save in the uh, yeah. In uh, you can basically not shoot against them with regular uh, state troopers. No, you need the premium armor penetration, like the Hellfire Wall Band. But but I'm not, I'm not gonna fly into that. No, one. <laughs> not too close to that one. Yeah, gotta uh, stay away, stay a bit away to the, from the sun. Yeah, but I think uh, Empire. I don't know, I, they don't feel strong. I think they need an arcane journal to get some stuff. But they have potential, but they're missing like a few pieces. Yeah, but, mm. but there are certainly like units uh, that are overperforming. Like Demogriff Knights, yeah. super strong. Battle Priest. Battle Priest, super good. Especially against Pegasus Knights. Anything yeah. that has two wounds, naturally. Yeah. They win combat just by themselves. It's so good. And you can't put a Lord on a, on a Demogriff. Yeah. Maybe putting like a block of Demogriff Knights with a Lord... Maybe room fang and some stuff. I think you can do yeah, some, some nasty uh, stuff. Yeah, like the, the Lord was a bit lackluster. Uh, he, he could have had a bit more like oomph from yeah. getting into combat with the battle. Uh, with, from the battle stun better. Yeah. But the skirmish rule is so strong as well. You're yeah. flying with your Lords and then they can charge in any direction. But at the same mm. time, I feel like the units themselves are not overly strong. Uh, yeah. Only the Lords and Heroes. Like the Pegasus Knights, they are good. But with proper positioning, they can often find themselves in a too dangerous spot to like be safe. Yeah. Um, but I think it was a, was a good game. Uh, you managed to save two, two no three of you. And you had one Demogriff Knights, and yeah. then you have two Knights uh, Errants and two Knights of the Realms remaining. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's something that we should discuss on a podcast, like the importance of. Managing unit sizes when you build your army. Like, mm -hmm. make sure that if you have like that uh, unit of six models, yeah. uh, then you need to like either get down to one or like kill the unit entirely to get any points. Yeah. Uh, unit strength of four, uh, unit model count of four is really good because then you yeah. never get any points for them being decimated to uh, below yeah. 25%. Four and three is, is really good because you don't get the penalty when you're going to uh, uh, rally either. Yeah. So I think uh, picking the right unit size is very important. Yeah. Uh, you can really screw yourself over by picking like yeah, five. And, uh, adding one extra model makes the unit so much worse if you go up to yeah. five. Yeah, it's, it's a big difference. But it was a really good game. Yeah. The Empire lost and the uh, Britannia remains victorious on the channel. They yeah. haven't lost uh... yet. Yeah. But uh, we'll keep on trying with Empire. I'm really like, I think that there is the list to play with them. Yeah, they should be able to find something. Yeah, they have so, so. good like individual models and rules. Yeah. Steam Tank really did work. Yeah, it, it did work, I guess. But it, it also missed quite a few times. And... Yeah, but it's such mm. an in, like hard unit to deal with because I basically never wanted to go anywhere near it. Now, it's like if you're talking about like reserving points. It's points that the opponent never going to get, no. basically. Like, yeah. they can never get those points. They have to do something really insane to, to yeah, make it happen. Yeah, commit so many resources that I, I seldom think it's worth it. Yeah, so it's just going to be there, it's going to be shooting, and it's point you never have to worry about losing. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be like Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah, <laughs> something like that has to do it. But uh, that is all for today. Yeah. And we'll see you Thank all you in for the future. Watching. Bye.